few years ago, we put uh, advocates uh, on the street, both from the Veterans Hospital and from the Human Service uh, Department from Stearns County. And it was just an automatic, within a couple of weeks, it was an automatic difference of how many people they had helped um, getting out of the alleys and from underneath the bridges and getting into the programs that they should be. But if you stop at the Church of the Week program uh, the other night when you had 40 or 40 percent of, of the um, young men that are, are there on the Church of the Week are veterans and most of those have disabilities. And if people don't have mental illness when they start, if you keep living under those conditions, you will before you know, are done. And I don't know. I think the environment can cause an awful lot of it. You know, the cold and the, and the worry about uh, um, where you're going to sleep and, and what's going to happen to you. It's, it's not a healthy condition. And I would also agree that, that the institution that takes care of most of our mentally ill is the county jail. That's not appropriate either. So. Well, I framed the problem. I haven't framed any solutions, but I certainly have the problem framed. Um, a lot of people in the room know me because I've been I've been around town for lots of people's lifetimes. <laughs> I haven't been here all my life, but I've been here almost everybody else's. <laughs> I'm going to say I was Carlson's coach, you know, yes. you know how old I am. <laughs> and one time I was a park director and I was, I was sitting in my office and the problems of the park department were just compounding and, it, and it, they were just enormous and I couldn't solve any of them. I couldn't absolutely fathom how I was going to make any solutions that were worthwhile and the phone rang and it was a nice young lady telling me that her child was over at Sea River Pool, which was closed and eventually taken out and had all that eat green icky water in. I don't know if you remember that era. But her little boy's Super Bowl bounced through the fence and went through the chain link and went in that icky water. And she said, when your crews are cleaning that up, could they find that ball for me? And I said, what's your name and address? And she gave me the name and address, and I went over and I took my shoes and socks off and I rolled my pants up and I walked around in the pool till I found that little rubber ball underneath my foot. <laughs> and I cleaned it off and I took it over to her house and it was really a cool, it was really a cool Super Bowl. It had a little dinosaur in there and barn balls, really good. And she said, why would you do that? So just so hunger get wanting to solve something. <laughs> And I sit in this room and I look at all these people. We have people that, you know, have insurance that are trapped and can't take a raise. They can't work an extra hour because they will lose their medical assistance. We got them trapped in poverty with people that, you know, are working like crazy just to, just to have insurance. And we do need to move this forward in the United States and Minnesota and our community. So, if it was as simple as me rolling up my feet and walking in some icky green water and looking for the Super Bowl, I'd be really happy to do it. But we have a lot of motivated people that are really searching out solutions, and I, I think we're going to find some solutions. And that's Mary, I think this country. Boom! Needs to work. Yeah. Boom! That was one of his favorite things. Yeah. <laughs>